Hey, what's up, everyone? This is uh, Eric. I'm here with my buddy, Steve. And uh, yeah, we're going to try something a little bit different here. Uh, we're just going to interview each other and, you know, we'll kind of see where it goes. Um, <laughs> this is potentially a new series that we're going to do. So, yeah, stay tuned for us uh, next week and, you know, we'll, we'll see who pops up. All right. So basically what we're going to try to do here is we're like Steve is, a, is an excellent guy. He does a lot. And we're just going to ask each other uh, questions about um, what, we're, what we're doing in, in life and how we're kind of giving back to the community. So I'm going to start off by asking Steve, you know, what was your diagnosis, Steve? Oh, my diagnosis. Oh, boy. We're going right to the big question. Yeah. Um, I think all of us sometime or another do get a bump in the road. So I hit my bump in the road. It was um, it was in 2016, end of the year. We were selling our company at that time, a company called New Step. And fantastic. We, we developed a product that was ideal for individuals of all abilities. And that was uh, something we created back in uh, 1990. And uh, it was a recumbent cross trainer that could be used. It's being used today in physical therapy, cardiac rehab, senior living communities, home buyers, gyms. Um, it was just fantastic and how we're able to help people stay active, you know, and uh, moving. Um, and then the fam my family just said it was a family business. So I never really thought about that, you know, <laughs> as, as, the, as the company was, was growing. And... Um, so, so then I, um, so I, um, we, my family decided to sell the business. And so it was really a difficult uh, time for me. I didn't really want to sell it. I loved what we were doing. Um, and then later, as we're getting closer to the sale, I had like a little bump right about there. And it was growing. It turned into a lump. And um, so um, I finally made it to U of M. I uh, had a uh, ear, ear, nose, and neck um, surgeon at U of M. And uh, they had done, well, they already did a CAT scan. And, uh, and so the doc, my doc, uh, Dr. McKean, came in with my wife and said that we have a tumor team. We need to do a biopsy, which they did. It went up my nose. And uh, at that time, my eye was being pushed to the side. It was just kind of a crunching, kind of a throbbing kind of a thing, not direct pain. Um, and so when she did the biopsy, she said, in 15 minutes, we'll let you know what's going on. They had a tumor team to look at it. So I told my wife, I said, I know it's cancer. I know it is. And, um, and Dr. McKean came in about 15 minutes later, and she had kind of like tears in her eyes. And so that made me really focus on her, even though I was hugging my wife, Lori. And, um, and she came in, and the doc had tears in her eyes. And that made me look at her even more closely. And so she said that what I had was the diagnosis is a uh, fast growing aggressive tumor, cancerous tumor in my ethmoid sin sinus cavity. Uh, you're probably thinking, wow, I've never heard of that before. And it was, it was rare. Um, so she couldn't really give me ads. Um, so she did say as a surgeon, um, they could attack it by surgery, but they'd have to take my eye out. And uh, not only that, they'd have to get the tumor. So I would be highly disfigured. And so I had moments to think about that. And of course I wanted to live. And I felt like if that is what happens, um, that's another adventure in life. I'd be disfigured. How do you survive through that? How do you cope? How do you live? And that was my whole thing is to live. Um, so I was mentally prepared for that, if that's what it needed to be. Um, but then she said, but um, that's pretty morbid. And 
Uh, and chemo and radiation, by the way, works really well on fast growing aggressive tumors. So it didn't take me long to think about that. I said, great, I love chemo. Let's get started. So that was my diagnosis um, in my treatment. So, yeah, and then we have stories about that. We're obviously both living, right, Eric? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You're a living, breathing young man, and I'm a living, breathing older man, which I love. I'm thankful, grateful to be getting older, and uh, but doing it in a positive way. Yeah. And uh, But what about you, Eric? What was your diagnosis? You had a big bump in the road. Uh, like, I, my, my story is kind of, kind of crazy because like I had just graduated from physical therapy school at yeah. University of Michigan Flint and uh you know I decided hey I want to go somewhere beautiful so I ended up moving to California uh just just a few weeks after I graduated I, why not go west young man exactly exactly so yeah I worked for uh, about a year and a half as a physical therapist in San Diego but um, I was. And you're a doc. And you're a doctorate, right? Doctorate oh, yeah, yeah, physical my, therapy. Yeah, I got my doctor of physical therapy degree from the University of Michigan, and like I decided that you know, hey, I should go somewhere fun to live, you know. So San Diego made the most sense for me, and uh, yeah. honestly, I loved it out there. I, I would go surfing uh, before work. I would do triathlon. I was just just getting into triathlons, which is. Yeah actually kind of funny because I don't really swim. So when my friends found out about that, they're like, are, are you crazy? And to be honest, I am a little bit. So, you know. We, we kind of have to be, right? To live yeah, right. the kind of lives, a good adventurous life. Yep, that's, that's right. So, but, um, you know, after about a year and a half of living there, I was starting to get these really weird symptoms. You know, I was getting uh, numbness in my, uh, you know, on the, on the left side of my body. Uh, mm. and I was getting a, a lot of weird symptoms like dizziness and headaches and of yeah. course I just started surfing so I thought that I had a ear infection sure. you, know, but, you know I went to my uh, primary care physician in in San Diego and he actually was a little uh, uh, surprised by the numbness in my face because you know with an ear infection you don't have you know the the numbness there so like yeah. You know, he ended up ordering an MRI for me, and I got that done. And what they found was a golf ball-sized brain tumor between the uh, brainstem and cerebellum. Yeah. So, you know, the the brainstem controls a lot of your unconscious body functions, and uh, yeah. you know, things like your heart rate, your breathing rate, and things like that. And uh, you know, to be quite honest with you, I was extremely intimidated by that, and I was scared because yeah. you know. At the time, this was in like 2005. The only time you heard about brain tumor, people with brain tumors, are people who passed away. Sure. You know, so like, I'm 30 years old. What is going to happen to me here? This isn't yeah. supposed to be happening. So, right. Yeah, they found the uh, the brain tumor, and I ended up having surgery at the place where I used to work. So a lot of my uh, old coworkers were my medical team. So that was kind of strange. And um, yeah, I actually had to undergo a, I think it was a 12 hour surgery, which was just insane. I'd, I'd never heard of that before. And I was yeah. in rehab where, with my old coworkers for about a month. And I continued outpatient physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech uh, at, at, with my uh, old coworkers. So it was very eye opening for me and for a lot of my family. You yeah. know, it, it, it just shocked everybody. Yeah. Sure. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. The course of my uh, treatment was uh, radiation therapy and uh, surgery. And like I said, I was in rehab for quite a while. And I had a lot of uh, uh, side effects from the surgery. So, like, uh, we definitely, you know, we're, we're you know, going into... Uh, unknown territory here because like yeah. we didn't know anybody that was that had gone through this and quite honestly the only thing that i found uh was easy for me to connect with people was going mm -hmm. online 
going, going to the internet, going to social media. I think Facebook was fairly new at the time, so I was just starting to get into that. And I got to meet yeah. a lot of people. That's great. But, uh, That's well, great. <laughs> thanks. Well, let's go on to you now. Like, I mean, sure. now what are you most proud of after you had your surgery? Oh, gosh. I think one of the most things after my surgery, um, number one, I was um, really, well, I didn't actually have surgery, it turned out, but it was more of the treatment that I survived. My surgery was really, um, um, this is three months after my treatment of chemo radiation. Um, so, um, they did do surgery, but at that point, we want to make sure they got it all, and uh, and they did. So what I, I was really most grateful for throughout that I was able to fight, and just a couple of things, because when you go through chemo and radiation, you don't want to eat, and it's really hard to drink. Here's a bottle of water. Everyone going through cancer always has water with them but it's, it's, it's probably usually one bottle. That's all you can drink all day. All right. So I was, I was most, most grateful that I never had an IV for any kind of food to be fed or hydration in me. So those were two things. I saw people going through that. My goal was, it's not going to be me. Um, so that's, I'm really proud of that. I was able to get through that. Um, and then after, of course, was getting up on, on my paddle board that summer, and then I walked the dunes, um, did the dune climb into Lake Michigan and back. That told me I was really back. Okay. And how, and, and how about you with your, what am I most, well, I've, most I've, actually, I've, I've actually done a lot, you know, since, since I had my surgery, I started sure. with cancer nonprofit. I wrote two books. Um, yep. starting to get reinvolved in physical therapy. So I've got some other things in the works here that I'm not yeah, you got a lot, lot to yeah. lot to live for. Yeah. Got some things in the works that I'm not ready to disclose yet. But um yeah there's there's a lot of stuff going on. But you know you'll just have to stay tuned and find out because like fantastic. It'll be great. Yeah awesome. Um Actually, let's get to know you a little bit better, Steve. Sure. Like, um, like the whole purpose of doing the, these interviews is to kind of like humanize the experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to ask you a kind of a strange question here. What Ooh. exactly is your uh, guilty pleasure? Like, wh what do you oh, like? My guilty you pleasure. You know, you oh boy, that's hard. That's hard to let people know my my guilty pleasure. Yeah. Um, I've got a few. Okay. One is coffee. I okay. love coffee. I love coffee with oat milk. That's a real guilty pleasure of mine. Um, also music. And I even go back to bubblegum music that I heard when I was a kid. Really? I could still go back there and listen to that. And it gives me kind of a little bit of joy. Like, um, how exactly would you define bubblegum music? Like what? Oh, gosh. It's like really poppy, young. Okay. Like, uh, there's a song called, believe it or not, Yummy, 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 I've Got Love in My Tummy. Believe me, that was a hit. Really? Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy, oh, and I feel okay. like loving you. Uh, the Archie Sugar, okay. Sugar, Sugar, gotcha. that kind of stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> okay. And, and how, how about you, oh, Eric? I, yeah. I know I... I know, like, I'm supposed to be healthy and all, but I know I'm not supposed to be eating this kind of stuff, but, you know. Ooh, let us know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, Tell I us. Like, uh, Oreo cookies. Like, I know they're, they're processed food, and <laughs> I just can't stop eating them. You know, like, they've got different flavors now. It's, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so like, I, I always make sure to get, you know, Oreo cookies whenever I go grocery shopping. Yeah. I, I just can't turn that stuff away. You yeah, know, that is some good stuff. Oh, yeah. man. Now, do, how do you eat it? Do you peel off? Do you take the top off and go for the cream inside? Or do you just eat it? Oh, no. You, you got to dip it in milk. That's the thing. I was going to, is it, what kind of, is it chocolate milk or white milk? It's just regular milk. 
regular milk. It just softens the uh, the outside shell, and then it's yeah. nice and gooey, and then it's got the cream in there. So yeah, yeah, that, definitely my guilty pleasure. Oreo cookie. Oh, man. I love that. I know what I know. I have, there's a gift I can give you, and you'd be very okay. happy. All right. Oh, and also for me, I do like an old fashioned drink. Okay. That's a guilty pleasure. I just sip one. It's a sip or drink. Yeah. Usually put bullet uh, bourbon in there. And okay. I love that. It's a good sipper. See, that's the thing. I'm Filipino American. So like whenever I drink alcohol, my face gets bright red. So I try to stay I try to stay away from alcohol, but I don't blame you. Back in the yeah. day, it was it was it was definitely the the dark beers. You know that was that was my guilty pleasure back in the day. Yeah. But now, you, know, you learned. Yeah, no, I've that learned, worth it. I learned to control myself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, I uh, love it. <laughs> okay, another weird question here is: Ooh. If you're a character in any book, who would it be and why? Ooh, a character in a book. I do a lot of reading and. I think probably the book that would really do it for me is a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And it was written by renowned psychiatrist, Viktor Frankl. And he survived the Nazi death camp. He spent three years in prison during World War II and he survived it. And he also really was very observant while he was in prison, where some prisoners would give up and others would continue. Um, so I have a couple of, just to, that we could go deeper into this, of course, but what he found is that there's psychological phases of a concentration camp. So the first thing is, um, it's admission when they go to camp, they're shock. Okay. And that could be even for someone like you or me, that we're shocked with their diagnosis. Then our routines are changed and that can oftentimes bring apathy. And then our, in, in the camp there, the liberalization was taken away. So it becomes depersonalized. And so some people just, they lose any kind of meaning for life. And so he found that coping mechanism, like for self-preservation, he found that those with rich inner lives survived. You know, they had family members, a lot of love, um, and also a goal. They had a goal for the future beyond this, what they were going through. He figured as temporary. And also there's a perception of choice. Okay. So his choice was to live and others chose not to continue. He witnessed that all the time. Um, so there's a sense of positivity. I love that book. Um, it's, uh, and I think it relates to people going through a rough diagnosis. Same thing, we have a choice. We can be positive, we can strive, to make it through it, it's going to be tough, but we're going to fight. And some people just give up. And I have no, res it's, I'm not, they're bad people by any means. It's just too tough. But it's just, I, I find that to be a great book. And to go through that experience would be amazing. I went through mine. You've gone through yours. It could be others coming, who knows? But anyway, that's it for me. And what about you? <laughs> if you were a character in any book, who would it be and why? Well, I will be quite frank with you. I'm kind of a kind of a geek and I'm yeah. very big into comic books. So yeah. another genre there. But uh, yeah. Yeah, like I grew up reading uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. Like I was reading this like when I was like 10 years old. I got my first comic book subscription then. So yeah. yeah. Like, like I mentioned, I'm kind of a dork, so... So you, you would be Spider-Man? Yeah, it would be Peter Parker's Splash slash Spider-Man. So, all right. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. You've seen all the movies of that. Oh, no, that, of course, of course. Yeah. No, it, <laughs> I think, like, uh, if, 
if I were to read like a re regular book, like I, I like reading a lot of autobiographies. So mm -hmm. Barack Obama uh, biographies are great. You know, mm -hmm. that, that would qualify as uh, what I would, I would look up to, you know, in terms yeah. of- Yeah, okay. And why would you want to be the amazing Spider-Man? Well, because I mean, he's, I always thought he was funny. Like whenever he was having uh, fights with villains or whatnot, he'd always say the, the craziest things and like yeah i just always uh I, I just always looked up to that even as a little kid you know because you know that that's the kind of attitude that you know i i kind of uh i kind of identified with even even back then it's like yeah he was this nerdy kid that did great things you know so i mean yeah. something that i always looked up to you know okay so, i love it love it but um now, here's the uh, last question I have for you to kind of like humanize the whole experience. Like, mm -hmm. if there was something you could eat for the rest of your life, what exactly would it be and why? Eat something for the rest of my life? <laughs> eating, you're saying. Well, I think I know what you're going you're gonna to be eating for the rest of your life. Um, I put down, because I did, I, I was thinking, I, I, think something like that would be the breakfast burrito at Zingerman's, but tricked up. I do a special, you know, they, they will do this. So I have, I have egg white, okay. and then I put in some salt and pepper, okay. easy cheese, easy cheesy, done a lot of cheese, roasted peppers, spinach, um, avocado, and I do put in that one strip of bacon and it's just fantastic. Never get tired of eating that. Now, what kind of like tortilla did they use for the breakfast burrito? Is it yeah, they have a wrap that they put around it. Um, you know, it's something that, you, I don't know if there's anything super special about that particular wrap, but there's not a lot of carbs in it. So I find it to be a very uh, healthy, and extremely nourishing, okay. Okay. but it's sloppy, Eric. I don't want anyone to think you can drive home to your car and eat this. You'll it'll come all over you. There's a lot of a lot of juicy in that, but it is really good. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, how about you, Eric? Uh, that's a again like. My, my diet has gotten so much better, but you know, there's one thing that I cannot turn down. <laughs> okay. Uh, pizza. You know, if pizza. I had something for the rest of my life, it would be pizza. Because well, that's not bad. You know, what, are you, what are you going to put on that pizza? You know, I know this it probably isn't very popular, but I like Hawaiian pizzas. I like pineapple on my pizza. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People are just totally against it but you know i think it tastes good no i think that's really good and they have the ham like the hawaiian pizza ham and uh and pineapple that sounds really great i know i know a lot of my friends don't like pineapple on their pizza but you know, it's okay i guess that could also be my guilty pleasure you know along with yeah the yeah the I orioles swear, I, swear, I swear i'm eating healthier but those are okay it's a guilty pleasure. I got it. That sounds really great. That sounds really great. Um, and I know that you wrote a book. You wrote a book, Eric. Yeah. Like I. I yeah. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I, I, I just remember going through physical therapy school and realizing that, hey, I have no idea what what a patient goes goes through. So I yeah. was in my hospital room on rehab there. And I was like, mm -hmm. I want to share my experiences with uh, students and everyone that, you know, wants to know what it's like, you know, and mm -hmm. quite honestly, I'd, I'd been blogging while I was going through everything. So mm -hmm. basically, I just transferred my blog uh, online to yeah. a book, you know, and it, it, it just made sense at the time. And that was, yeah, I read it. I love it. It's a great book, Eric. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Actually, Steve, do you want to talk a little bit about your book? Um, sure. Yeah, I did one too. Mine's kind of a simple little book. It's on my, it's on my cancer journey. That's kind of me a little bit younger. This is Photoshop, not Photoshop, but 
I need to be photoshopped to make it look like that. Um, but yeah, that's my, my battle. I just felt like I wanted to do it first for my family and just to collect my, get my experience down in writing and kind of like you, it's sort of a tool to help others. You know, there's certain things that I found to be very helpful for me, you know, music. I went way back when I, in my walks, when I was able to get out and really walk, I listened to music that was important to me when I was a kid, you know, like going through um, puberty, you know, like Chicago was big, the Beach Boys. I just go back to that. I just, I felt like I was flying, like a bird flying, just free and just felt great. Um, so there's some, there's certain things that I felt were really important, you know, like support from family, love. I got a lot of love, just so grateful for that. Um, so I just put in some of the things that were, that helped me fight, helped me be positive. Um, and, you know, and the fact is none of us gets out of this alive. So it does test your spirituality. You know, I didn't know if I'd make it or not. But I was kind of okay with my life. I had no regrets. And so in many ways, I was going to, if it came to the end, I was going to show my kids how to do it, you know, kind of as a teaching lesson, yeah. you know, with faith, with faith. That's the thing, Steve. Like, I think, like you're mentioning, music is extremely powerful. You know, it is. Me, it definitely helped me uh, express my emotions. And yeah, actually, exactly. Yeah, and in, in my book, like I, I had all my chapters were popular music songs. Exactly. So yes. Just kind of express the way that I was feeling at the time. You know, whether exactly. I was confused or whether I was scared. And music was best like I, I'm not a very talkative guy. So like music was my way of just expressing myself. Yeah. And yeah. Very, I found it very I found it very healing to write as well. Um, so I recommend anyone that goes through something like cancer, you know, write your story. Um, it's very, very therapeutic to do that. I totally agree. So, I mean, yep. um, actually, I was just curious, what organizations are you involved with right now? Like, what? Well, the company. Yeah, well, company New Step, you know, that we started years back, I'm on the board of the company, so I'm still involved. It's not quite like I'm an you know, active player like I was, but I'm grateful to be on the board and um, it's been five and a half years since we sold the company. So I'm, a, I'm apprised to what's going on. Um, they're very open with that. Um, so I really, I'm a, I appreciate that. I'm also on a board with um, Brio's, um, Living Services, the Sustainable Living Community. I'm on the foundation board. I can, that's been a great opportunity for the older adult population, which I've always had an affinity um, for the older group. And um, it gives me that opportunity. And I'm also newly on the board of Trinity, uh, the, the healthcare company in Ann Arbor, uh, Brighton and Livingston. So, and they're doing great things you know, to really help the care. It's been really difficult, you know, with COVID. Yeah. And uh, for everybody, New Step, um, sen the Senior Living and uh, Trinity. And I'm also on a, on the board of the Kresge Hearing Institute. And there's doing a lot of great research. And I have loss of hearing in my left ear. A lot of it had to do with the radiation yeah. um, treatment that I have. So I still struggle a bit with my left ear. Although I do have, I do have hearing apparatus, um, but it took a bit of a toll. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm really, I mean, you can imagine life without music, Eric, yeah. you know, I can't, you know, and so I'm just, I, I didn't, I'm glad that I have these. I'm glad I, I'm so thankful I can hear music because um, it's so important to the soul. And, uh, and Eric, how about you? No, it's funny. Like I've I've been uh, uh my former career is I'm uh, actually a retired physical therapist, so I'm been yeah. slowly getting reinvolved in the uh, profession again. Like my, I'm ex there's actually an APTA APTA oncology section specifically for balance and falls. 
which is a yeah. social group. I'm involved with that. And uh, just recently, I, I'm starting to get involved with the uh, Michigan American, American Physical Therapy Association, uh, Michigan chapter. And they've got yep. an oncology uh, special interest group as well. And I'm yep. just a new part of that as well. So like I'm yeah. getting re-involved in the profession, not exactly the way I, I was envisioning it, but I'm, I'm yeah. getting back involved with that. With it's your passion. Involved. It's your meaning. It's all about giving back, right, Eric? Exactly. Yep. That's like everything. I, yeah, and like I mentioned before, I've got something else in the works. So, you know, just yeah. kind of stay tuned. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll disclose that information probably uh, later in the fall. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's really very excited about that's, it. That's fantastic because that that just shows, you know, you have a rich inner life, you know, you've got family, friends that you love, you've got goals for the future, and then you have you have choice of what you're going to do. So you're really hitting on, you know, how, how to move forward, you know, fantastic. That's like you mentioned, moving forward. That's not something that, you know, a lot of people think, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, cancer or whatnot or even right. disabilities. So, I mean, you know, that's definitely something that needs to be brought to the light more. You know, people need to be more aware. Well, I think, um, you know, who do you look up to? Who do I look up to? Oh, yeah. Well, th that's the thing. Like, for me, uh, all, all, my, all my teachers were very influential in me. All my teachers and my coaches uh, growing up through elementary school, through high school, and even through college. You know, so I mean, yeah, I, I always looked up, I always treated them with a lot of respect. And that's, yeah. that's a kind of, uh, in fact, I want to have on people too, you know, yeah. and, and I hope the people that do also who kind of do what we're doing, you know, we have a unique opportunity here to be, you know, role models for other, other mm -hmm. patients and whatnot. So, yeah, for sure. And yeah, I think. I, I do. I, for me, I think what I who I look up to is anyone that's gone through a big challenge, okay. you know, a bump in the road, and is moving forward. You know, I think it's great if somebody climbs Mount Everest. That's an incredible achievement. But there's others like one step is like for them is Mount climbing Mount Everest. I think it's not known the work it takes for people to come back. So I look up to you. I look up to, um, oh God, a fr friend of mine, uh, Aaron Baker. He's a recovering quadriplegic. <clears throat> Done so much in his life. He's now a, a father, got married, is fantastic. I look up to my mom who is, has MS. She can't move. You know, at 91, she has trouble eating. But her spirit, she got that great smile. I have so I look up to her. So anyone that's going through a challenge, um, I have a lot of respect, uh, empathy. Um, I want to do whatever I can to help someone help themselves. Okay. Well, actually, Steve, do you have any parting words for everyone? I mean, I think we. we oh gosh, parting words. That's really. I think uh, parting words for anyone listening in. I think everyone has has their gift. You're born with it, um, and I think in I think in life it's really important to be honest in your life, who you are, and um, and just don't hold back because you never know. You just don't know in life, so don't wait to next year. Um, if there's something you have real passion for do it go for it um you don't want regrets in your life and live honestly not your honest life yeah for me my, my parting words are is are um there, there's always a way you know whether you just have to be a little creative but there's always if you really want to do something you know there's a way to do it, it might not be exactly yeah. the way you want but you know, if you're creative, you're going to be able to do whatever you want to do. You know? Amen. Again, it's a pleasure to to uh, to be with you today, and and thank you for setting this up. Okay, let me stop stop the recording here.